Today we're going to learn about Bcrypt, how it protects our users from evil hackers, and also how to use it in our applications. So Bcrypt is a hashing algorithm. Other hashing algorithms include ND5, SHA-1, and each of these algorithms are like their own little black box. When you insert a string like hello, you stick it in the Bcrypt, and out comes a bunch of random letters and numbers. Every time you enter in hello into Bcrypt, you will get the same hash no matter how many times you do it. It's a very useful property. That's what hashing algorithms do. The point of hashing algorithms is that you can go from hello to the hash, but it is nearly impossible to go from the hash back to hello. These other hashing algorithms do the same thing. They're all the same. The differences are these two are pretty fast, but Bcrypt is designed to be slow. And that's a good thing. It protects our users from deadly hackers. So the reason we want Bcrypt to be slow is because sometimes our databases get compromised. So let's say we have a couple users. We will call them Alice and Bob. And they sign up for our website. Alice is smart. Alice signs up with some random password that she does not use on every other website. But Bob is not so smart. Bob uses a password that he uses on many, many other websites as well. Now when these people sign up for our website, we have to store their passwords in our database. So this is our database, our users database. We have user ID, we have email, and we also have password. So when Alice signs up, we give her a user ID, we give her an email and a password. Now, if you employ zero security, you will store the password in plain text. You never actually want to do this. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to change these real quick. So let's pretend Mr. Hacker has found a flaw in our server. And now he hacks it so that all of this stuff goes to him. Because our passwords are in plain text, he can take these passwords and emails and he can attempt to use them in many different other websites. So he's going to take alice at whatever.com and then attempt to use this password for other sensitive websites like banking websites or email accounts or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. But because Alice is smart and she used the password just for this website, that doesn't work. So Alice is safe. However, there are unfortunately a lot of users who use the same password for many different websites. So because of that, Bob is not safe at all. Bob happens to use the same password for his email account. So now the hacker writes a program to test all of these and he discovers that Bob's email account also uses this password because it worked. So now Bob's email is compromised even though his email server did not get hacked. So because of this unfortunate fact that many people use the same password for everything, we must protect our users. And we protect our users by storing not the password in plain text, but storing a hash of the password. Because again, it's very easy to get from here to here, but it's nearly impossible to get from here back to the original string. So if we store the hash, then nobody can really guess the original password. In practice, this hash of the password is called a password digest, assuming this is a password. So let's change this. Instead of storing this, we use bcrypt to generate some hash. So it's a much longer hash. It's probably going to be around 30, 50 characters. And now, even though the hacker has obtained this list of passwords and emails, he doesn't quite know what this original password is. He can't take this and then try it in this email account because it's not an actual password. It's just a hash of a password. But even this is not secure enough. What hackers have done is they use what's called a dictionary attack. And what they do is they take a list of common passwords and they pre-compile their bcrypt hash. So for example, abc123, let me in, password. They have a very, very, very long list of common passwords and they just, they generate all of the hashes for those passwords. 
These are all fake uh, hashes, by the way. And now what the hacker does is that he takes these password hashes, this is now a password digest, and he compares them with all the ones he has. And if any of them match up, then he knows the original. So this is not completely secure either for those unfortunate common users. So instead of just hashing this directly, what we use is called a salt, password salt. And this salt can be anything we want. We will call it, we'll call it my salt. It's just a string. And the idea of a salt is that instead of hashing the password directly, you hash the password plus the salt. And then you store that instead. So now this will change. Just making this up again. And this will also change. Even though we're storing abc123, because we combine it with the salt before we compute the hash, this will no longer match with this. So our user's passwords are safe. One thing I forgot to mention, if the hacker compromises our passwords, he also compromises our salt. So the hacker can take that salt and then generate another dictionary and then try to get all of these common passwords out of our database. However, this is the point where bcrypt becomes especially important. Remember that bcrypt is designed to be slow. Because it's slow, creating this dictionary will take a very, very long time. If it was instead a fast hashing algorithm like MD5, the hacker could create this in like an instant, but he can't. Because we're using bcrypt, this will take too long to be anything meaningful. So that's the whole reason bcrypt is designed to be slow.